welcome um, to this next lecture. Uh, and uh, from the equivalent circuit, we have in my last few lectures, we uh, drew the top slip characteristics and highlighted the importance of that because top slip characteristics tells you if the machine is run at a particular speed or slip, how much electromagnetic torque the motor is capable of developing. And uh, in our last lecture, uh, based on the equivalent circuit, we got these two very important results. One is T max the maximum electromagnetic torque developed by the machine is V 7 in square by 4 pi n s. Mind you this n s is in r p s mechanical speed and 1 by this is r thevenins plus square root of r thevenin square plus x thevenins plus x 2 dash squared. This was T max and the slip value at which this T max occurs, I denoted it by alpha and it was uh, like this R 2 dash by square root of R thevenins squared plus x thevenins plus x 2 dash whole square. So, these were very important results. Now, uh, and uh, the typical torque slip characteristics uh, we always draw that will be something like this. Here it is s equal to 1, here it is s equal to 0 and speed is this way which is n r equal to 0 and this is n r equal to n s and this is T max, T max and this is the value of slip at which maximum torque occurs and these are the expression for that. Therefore, if the equivalent circuit parameters are known, we will be able to uh, predict what uh, the motor how much maximum torque the motor is capable of developing and, and at what slip it does. I told you that for a very well designed motor this alpha should be a typical value could be 0.1 and this is you know 1 and this is starting torque. And then I told that uh, if the torque slip characteristics is known machine will operate at the point of intersection. Suppose, this is the load torque point of intersections motor will operate it gives two speeds out of which one is stable that is this one is the most important one machine cannot uh, settle down at this point although T equal to T L because it is critically stable. A slight disturbance um, this way or that way will uh, change the operating point either to this point or to this point that is motor will not run and it will never come back to its original position that is why it was called unstable so far as uh, constant load torque is constant. And last time I told therefore, this zone for a constant load torque like this is stable, stable zone and this one is unstable zone, unstable zone and motor will operate primarily in this steep uh, portion of the torque slip characteristics. And also we noted uh, that uh, the full load torque, if it is full load torque, it will be more or less in between, so that you keep enough margin from the uh, uh, line of demarcation between stable and unstable zone. And the full load slip could, could be of the order of 0 0.05, half of this is 0 0.05 and so on. Okay. 
Now, today what we will do is this, we will try to see how this top slip characteristics gets modified uh, if I change certain parameters in the uh, which are appearing in the equivalent circuit. For example, uh, this is uh, the uh, stator of the induction motor which is energized from three phase supply and this is the rotor. I have assumed star star connected for the time being. And uh, this rotor terminals are shorted okay, and you give three phase supply here okay, and machine uh, stator field is produced machine runs suppose in this direction and obviously, the uh, net field is also moving in this direction with N s stator field or main field whatever it is. <coughs> <coughs> now, this R2 dash and X2 dash are the inherent uh, resistance and leakage reactance of the rotor R2 and X2. These are of course, uh, reflected values it should be multiplied by a square terms we know that. Now, and here this per phase voltage applied is V 1, V 1. Now, if uh, you change the supply voltage, how this top slip characteristics is going to modify, let us first examine. Suppose, we will vary the supply voltage, suppose V 1 that is the supply voltage is varied. obvious reason if V 1 is the rated voltage, I am not going to increase the voltage, because it will exceed the rating of the induction motor. You know, I can only reduce the supply voltage. Therefore, V 1 if it is suppose reduced, so V 1 is to be reduced only not uh, increase, because assuming V 1 this is the top slip characteristics corresponding to rated applied voltage like this. Then you will see that if V 1 is decreased that becomes meaningful, uh, no question of increasing the supply voltage it may exceed the rating of the suppose 400 volt three phase machine. I should not uh, go beyond 400 volt. Now, if V 1 is decreased, then the question is how V thevenins, because V thevenins has got the term V 1 and recall the equivalent circuit here R 1 x 1, which are small and here it is x m. and this is x 2 dash and this is r 2 dash by s. Yes. This is the equivalent circuit. Now, here it is v 1. So, I am playing with v 1, I am reducing it. Then we know that v thevenins is nothing but the magnitude of this v thevenins is v 1 applied voltage divided by uh, the this 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 current that is r 1 square B theven in open circuit voltage. So, r 1 square this is also j plus x 1 plus x m whole square is not this will be this into into x m that will be the magnitude of the voltage. Generally r 1 x 1 is small. So, this is approximately it will be 
is not a bad idea to understand what is going to happen if V1 is varied to approximately tell okay, uh, this is close to V1 because R1, X1, if you neglect this will be under root Xm, Xm, Xm will cancel, it is approximately V1. So, uh, because uh, if, if R1, X1 small compared to Xm. So, if that be the case, so if you reduce the voltage in this expression of T max, the T max will also get reduced because V thevenin square is approximately V 1 square as a first approximation we can assume that. Therefore, if V 1 is halved suppose halved that is V 1 is halved then T max now will become that is V 1 by 2 you have made. So, it will become 1 fourth T max will become 1 fourth of the T max when supply voltage was equal to V 1 is not it at a maximum torque will become 1 fourth. If you make it one third, it will become one ninth because square of the voltage supply voltage dictates what should be this T max. Therefore, if this is the T max for applied voltage V 1, if you have reduced the voltage by half, your top slip characteristics will become like this. This one will become one fourth that of this. Slip at which maximum torque occurs that does not change. Therefore, this peak here will remain same, alpha value remains same, but it will become only one fourth. And therefore, uh, under an applied voltage which is equal to half the rated voltage and suppose this is the full load torque of the machine, you can easily see you cannot supply a full load torque because machine is not at all capable of developing T L in its range of 0 to 1. So, the effect of variation of supply voltage reduces T max drastically. If the supply voltage is uh, made half, it becomes one fourth and so on. Therefore, this is how the torque slip characteristics will get modified for different different voltage if you reduce it like this. So, this is uh, V 1 decreasing V 1 decreasing a family of curves you can get keeping frequency constant frequency supply frequency I am not going to change and, and I have assumed you do not have any provision to vary the frequency. Therefore, uh, this is the uh, effect of variation of supply voltage on torque slip characteristics. Therefore, with applied voltage less you can supply a load torque which should be below this T max and half of this. So, the operating slip here will be like this and full load torque may be which should be also drastically reduced you cannot connect a mechanical load which demands uh, a load torque whose value is greater than T max now that is this one. So, a machine will looks like will un underperform we will come to this point later when we talk about speed control of the induction motor. So, this is the effect of variation of supply voltage on the torque slip characteristics. Now, there is another parameter which we can vary 
and see what is going to happen. Before that one problem I will try to just mention and this is like this. See this is the talk slip characteristics I told you. This is s equal to 1, s equal to 0 and this is suppose the full load torque as I told you like this T load is equal to T full load suppose somewhat midway. Now, you can see the if the motor one way to supply this full load torque is that with the load torque present already on the shaft of the machine and machine is stationary, if you switch on the supply your starting torque is only this much machine can develop and opposing torque is this much therefore, motor will fail to start because you have not produced enough starting torque to overcome the opposing full load torque which is already present. Okay. Therefore, this machine cannot be started as it is with full load mechanical torque connected to the shaft. So, what is the way out? One way out is that do not connect the mechanical load first, then the machine has to start only against the frictional torque which it can do frictional torque may be within this limit and then machine will settle down to no load speed and then you connect the your mechanical load torque then the operating point will shift here and settle down here which is the stable zone. But sometimes what is needed is that the machine has to start this mechanical load will be permanently connected whether it is running or not and you switch on the supply and machine should be able to supply this full load torque that is the thing required. But then we are facing this problem that okay, starting torque is only this much what can we do there is a way out what is that and that is a very nice thing. We have seen that these two relations are very important. Okay. What is R 2 dash? R 2 dash is the rotor circuit resistance and here I have shorted the rotor. So, this small R 2 is the inherent value of the rotor resistance per phase. Now, if we could the idea is at the time of starting I will connect some resistance in the rotor circuit because rotor terminals are available. I will connect some resistance in the rotor circuit at the time of starting. Therefore, I am essentially trying to understand how the top slip characteristics will get modified if I vary the rotor resistance. How I am varying the inherent rotor resistance this R 2. Now, I will connect some R 2 external. So, total rotor resistance will become this R 2 plus R 2 external per phase in the rotor circuit and this R 2 plus R 2 external dashed then I have to substitute in the expression of the electromagnetic torque as well as in the value of the slip at which maximum torque occurs. So, you see this is the thing. So, this is uh, the torque slip characteristics with inherent resistance R 2. Now, I will increase the rotor resistance by connecting some external resistance of equal values in each of the phase airs and then I will short. So, so if R 2 is increased, if 
R 2 is increased by adding by adding extra resistance in the in the rotor circuit in the rotor circuit rotor circuit then how the torque slip characteristics gets modified. That is the question we are asking ourselves. Now, the value of this slip T max if you look at the expression does it depend on R 2? No, R Thevenin's has to do something with R 1 and X m. B Thevenin's is supply voltage constant there is no R 2 dashed. So, T max value is not going to change. What is going to change is the slip at which maximum torque occurs. Note if you increase R 2 by connecting external resistance say R 2 external, I will say T max does not change, T max does not change. But this slip at which T max occurs T max occurs that changes. that is alpha changes and and alpha becomes more now alpha becomes more compared to the rated condition this alpha this is the alpha with inherent rotor resistance per phase Therefore, the shape of the curve will not change because some parameters we have uh, increased a bit resistance. Therefore, what will happen if you add some external resistance what I am telling this T max is fixed it is not going to change, but the value of alpha at which maximum torque it will be alpha nu will be R 2 plus R 2 external dashed okay, R 2 dashed plus R 2 external dashed divided by blah blah I mean that thing square root of R Thevenin square plus X Thevenin plus X 2 dash squared this this will be the value of alpha nu. So, and and this will be greater than uh, alpha which was what was alpha? Alpha earlier was based on alpha was simply R 2 dash by the same square root I mean whatever it is, but only numerator was R 2 dash. Therefore, this alpha was less and it will then becomes something like this. This one is this is for R 2 dash this is for R 2 plus R 2 external. So, the slip at which maximum torque occurs now will become alpha 1. Now, if you observe carefully by doing this 
this starting torque has been increased earlier it was this much, but now it is this much, but still it is less than that opposing full load torque. So, therefore, we will be tempted and rightly so because of the fact that alpha shifts to the right and then further increase up to external then you will get a torque like this. So, R 2 external increasing this way eh? I will write it like this to external. If you further increase it will maximum torque will occur at some value of alpha 2 and you now find that by incorporating an external resistance in the rotor circuit the starting torque has now become greater than the load torque and if you now switch on the supply with the opposing torque present then machine will start no problem and machine will start and will settle down at this point because this is the load torque characteristics with some R 2 external present and machine will run at this speed because that is the stable zone only one point of intersection we are getting. In fact, if you wish you can connect a judicious value of R 2 external so as to get the starting torque equal to the maximum torque the motor can develop because I will then connect uh, there, there exists some value of R 2 external such that this T max which does not change as you vary R 2 T max may occur here at S equal to 1. So, that machine will accelerate fast Therefore, not only that this problem that that with inherent rotor resistance although the machine is capable of starting where against full load torque one way out is do not connect that full load opposing torque at the beginning do not do anything with the rotor keep it shorted right at its terminals and then after machine settles down to no load speed put that opposing load torque on the shaft and then machine will operate here. But I am now telling another interesting thing if the rotor terminals are available I will connect some R 2 external in the this green uh, resistance external resistance equal values. So, that balanced thing is preserved. So, per phase resistance will be R 2 plus R 2 external and I will switch on the stator supply, but which torque slip characteristics it will follow. If you have added enough uh, rotor resistance such that uh, it is modified here, then machine will accelerate fast and uh, operating point will shift and this is the point of intersection this load torque is present it will run at this speed is not. Now, the big question is whether after getting that starting torque advantage should we keep this resistance intact in the circuit. The answer is obviously no because of the fact if you keep the resistance in the circuit permanently after exploiting the starting torque advantage that particular property rotor resistance will be x r 2 plus r 2 external and the power loss in the rotor circuit will be then more while supplying the full load torque efficiency of the motor will reduce. Therefore, it is better you connect some uh, selected value of R 2 external 
and then as the motor picks up speed you gradually cut out the resistance. Finally, this rotor circuit should be shortened. We will discuss it further in the next class.